a state working group that's contributing to the national inventory. Uh, that group has not um, really done anything yet, and I was just notified by email that as of this afternoon, I have been made chair of that working group, and I was not previously a member of it. So, um, uh, so you know, this is the beginning of information that will hopefully go farther. Uh, I'm also new to the jurisdiction, uh, having relocated from New York, so. Um, the knowledge that I have is largely from you know, a couple of days of asking a lot of questions from my uh, colleagues in the library uh, and, and colleagues elsewhere in the state. Uh, the short answer is uh, that there is a lot of information uh, in a general sense um, available uh, publicly on the web, in online, outside of the, the large integrated literary research systems. Essentially, none of it is official. Essentially, none of it is uh, authenticated um, in any fashion. Um, we looked at municipalities, and actually, in contrast to Illinois, uh, with the sort of asterisk possible mysterious exception of Cleveland, uh, none of it is uh, sort of self-hosted or uh, directly provided by the cities. Uh, it's really all done through these uh, you know, third-party you know, codification firms uh, and then a third-party uh, hosting the, the material online. Uh, these are rife with copyright assertions either in the city or in the, um, you know, the firm that provides the codification and, and publishing services uh, in the mix of that. Um, and finally, these are these aren't large, or these striking as especially sophisticated outfits. So a lot of um, uh, you know HTML products that are you know served up in these kind of frame-based uh, table layout pages. Uh, you know, not the kind of thing where I have a lot of confidence that there's a you know a partner there or, or either you know within the, the, the third parties that are doing the complication services or within the cities themselves uh, to be at the point where, you know, hey, you want a, a stream of, you know, clean, semantically marked up, uh, you know, information. Well, yeah, we know, we know how to do that. We can, we can do that too. Um, the possible weird asterisk assumption is that the Cleveland um, codes um, are um, actually available on fine wall, um, not in the, the link, you know, the outward bound links to. Um, Outside material serves through fine law, but on fine law, um, the city clerk of council, um, clerk of the city council, couldn't tell me um, why they were there, how they got there. Um, <laughs> referred me to the, the city attorneys, uh, who I'll speak to uh, soon. Um, on the other hand, the uh, the publication that is essentially the the, the local laws publication for Cleveland the City Record. Uh, was the one example of the municipal level legal authority in Ohio that I did find actually hosted by the, the municipality itself on the, on the city website, um, you know, as a, a periodic PDF, uh, although retained uh, for a significant period back in time. <coughs> the um, state um, statutory and administrative codes are both available um, freely on the web um, through uh, LawWriter, which is the, the technical part, partner for Casemaker, uh, is the firm that, that, that makes Casemaker uh, run. Uh, my understanding is that there is an exclusive arrangement so that LawWriter is the uh, exclusive online, you know, public internet um, source for, uh, again, both the statutory and administrative uh, code material for the state of Ohio. Uh, it's there. Uh, it's there. It's, again, it's, uh, it's HTML. It uh, avidly disclaims its official status. Uh, the official uh, publication is, is a West publication. Um, uh, but it's there to be seen. The uh, state administrative register is online, again, back file, PDF, dump. Uh, this is a publication that's only existed from 2000. It's online from 2003. Uh, I don't know what happened for the intervening year. I suspect, you know, really very informally, the newsletter kind of publication for those years. So there may be a visibility gap. Um, 
The uh, Legislative Service Commission, uh, on the other hand, uh, so again, with the, the legislative materials, does make bill analyses, uh, bill status reports uh, available online. There's actually a relatively deep back file for those. Uh, once again, that is both in text files and in PDF files. Uh, and they're text-based PDFs, so cut and pasteable, uh, mineable. Uh, and the House and Senate journals are on the legislative websites um, as PDF files. Uh, the courts, um, by contrast, are actually relatively sophisticated. Uh, slip opinions are available uh, as PDF files uh, from 1992. Um, and they are also available from the 90s forward uh, with a, uh, what's, what they call, referred to as a website. Uh, and this is a, a, a platform neutral uh, unique identifier for the case. Uh, but again, those are the slip opinions. Uh, once again, the Ohio Official Reports uh, is a, a, uh, uh, a West publication. Uh, and the um, material from the state Supreme Court, from the state intermediate appellate courts, um, is that there's a, uh, you know, a PACER-esque uh, electronic case management system uh, that can be used relatively uh, effectively. And a number of the county courts, so the, um, uh, the, the, the major case trial courts, um, also have online copy systems. And in some cases, um, filings and um, actual materials are available through those, uh, those copy systems. Uh, 